I recently got rid of most of my social media accounts. I no longer have a business Facebook or a personal Facebook. I don't have a business or personal Instagram. I don't have a business or personal Twitter. I got rid of my LinkedIn. I don't like a lot of these sites, and I wasn't able to really put my finger on why it was that using these sites was bothering me, but I think I've finally gotten to a point where I understand. Besides the constant, constant pitchfork mobs and the fact that they often bring out the worst in people who would never in a million years talk that way if the person that they were talking to were actually in front of them, it also it, it kind of is used for people to show not just how great their lives are, but also how good they are. How great the new car they got that you can't afford is. How great the party they went to is and how they make it look so, like so much more fun than it actually was that you weren't invited to. How great uh, their ass is that's perfectly sculpted on Instagram on their fitness account after they've filtered it a thousand times over and photoshopped it so that thirsty people can double tap it until they, have, until they can get sponsors based off of sexually frustrated men. Uh, but not just how great they are as, uh, in terms of how great their life is going, but it's also used for people who are really popular to show how good they are, how much they care about the world, how much they care about the environment while they drive an SUV, how much they care about survivors of rape when often themselves, they, they themselves get, get accused of it, how, how good they are when it comes to caring about in wealth inequality and poverty when they have a $8 million mansion. And I'm sick and tired of reading about this stuff. And, uh, and there's this misconception that I think goes on, which is that the higher you go on the social stratosphere, the more you have to pretend that you are so good, the more that you have to pretend that you are this ideal that very few people meet up to. I don't think that this is a good thing. I think that this is actually very harmful. Because the reality is that most everyday people are very, very flawed. And so am I. There are people that I've met with similar businesses that were doing 10 times better than me, even though they put in 5% the work and had 1% the knowledge. And I would say that I wanted them to fail, not because they were doing better than me, but because I would nitpick at all the things that I thought they did that were morally reprehensible. But the reality was, even if they weren't morally reprehensible, I wanted them to fail just because they were able to accomplish what I didn't, and I hated them for it. That was wrong. That was jealousy. That was envy. There are relationships that I've stayed in long past the time that I should have left because I was afraid of being alone, and I would have rather stayed with somebody that liked me far more than I liked them, even if it wound up hurting them, because I just didn't want to be alone. There are situations where I've been really, really angry, and I've said things that I shouldn't have said that were god-awful. I've probably made racist and sexist jokes, even if I didn't actually feel racist or sexist, just because I wanted a cheap laugh in the moment. There are people that I've hired and then fired, knowing they probably weren't going to make the cut, asking them to live up to every expectation they probably wouldn't live up to, and they probably felt like crap the entire time. I've owed debts that I haven't repaid. There are people in my family that I've had really bad conversations with, and then they died, and that was the last that they heard from me. There are many things that I've done over the course of my life that have not been right. There are many thoughts that I've had that have not been correct. There are many times that I have said, well, I am afraid of taking this risk because if I take this risk, I may fail. But if I don't take the risk, I can say, well, the reason I'm not taking the risk is because I want to stay the little guy. I don't want to be, to be a real business owner and risk failure if, if it means I can accomplish something, I'd much rather say that I just want to be able to be a man of the people and keep my prices low or not have to, you know. There are times where I've pretended to be virtuous when in reality I was scared or ineffective. And I'm sure that we've all had our own versions of being imperfect humans and saying things we shouldn't have said or doing things we shouldn't have done or feeling angry when we shouldn't have felt angry or taking advantage of situations that we shouldn't have taken advantage of out of fear. But that's a part of being a human. And I'm sick and tired of logging onto platforms where the higher people are in the echelon, the more they hide the fact that they are actually human from everybody else. The more they hide the things that they think they can't say because if they say it, they'll get in trouble due to the social narrative. I'm sick and tired of seeing people retweet and copy and paste shit that they know is popular, that they know they're going to get patted on the back for by everybody else, and that's it. And I'm sick and tired of people crucifying each other when every now and then, somebody accidentally lets it slip that they're human, that they can make mistakes, that they think terrible things and may do terrible things, and that they, like everybody else, needs course correction. Everybody, at some point in their life, will need points of course correction. 
No one individual is fully evil or fully perfect. Okay, maybe some, but actually one that I'd like to do, a doc, uh, but the, I'll leave that for another video. But I'm sick and tired of seeing people pretend that you can define an individual by one statement or by one action. I've done many bad things. I've thought many bad things, but I've also done many good things. I've helped as many people as possible learn something because it was difficult for me, and my dad always used to say, uh, if, you, if you think the world should be a certain way, you have to be a part of the change you want to see in the world, or you should shut the fuck up and stop bitching about it. There are, there are people that I've helped that nobody else would have helped when they were down and out or broke, that where there was probably no return on investment, that I just thought, here, I'm going to do a nice thing. I encourage people to share knowledge as freely as possible. I have volunteered at organizations that help people with certain terminal illnesses. There are things that I've done that are very good. But there are, and social media, by all means, if you want to show all that stuff, go ahead and do it. But don't hide the fact that you've probably done things that are very, very bad. I'm tired of social media being used as a bunch of shelves for people's trophies that showcase just how good they are. Just how they think about how the world should be this way or should be that way or should be however the popular narrative says it should be without putting in any effort to make it better. I'm tired of seeing social media accounts that talk about how the world should be without showcasing any of the actual work they've put in to try to be a part of the change they want to see in the world. Let your social media account be a testament to everything that you've done that has made the world better, but also how on the journey to it you've been an imperfect person or you've said or done imperfect things. Don't try to tell me that you are better than everybody else in the world. Further, I would much rather deal with somebody who has every now and then done or said something that is immoral, but who is actually effective in creating positive change, than deal with somebody who talks a good game, but is actually useless. It's easy for someone to say, I would like for there to be less crime. It's hard to actually work with kids in a crappy neighborhood and find something that they can bond over other than killing each other. It's easy to say that you care about income inequality. It's hard to actually find something that you can do to employ people so that maybe people who did not have an income can now have an income. It's easy to say that you think that people should be better educated and teachers should be more paid and blah, blah, blah. It's hard to actually come up with a superior way to teach so that you can get concepts across to large groups of people. It's easy to say that education should be better when you've never actually been tasked with sitting in front of people and teaching them something that they don't know. It's easy to say that Businesses should all pay more and everybody should have more money when you've never actually had to create net profit in your life. It's easy to complain and say that there should, uh, there should be more opportunities or less crime in certain areas, being that every, but it's easy to say these things when you've never actually gone into these areas and interfaced with people and lived next to them and actually when you were broke, gone door to door and say, hey, is there anything I could do or any chores that I can do for you for $5? Because... Let's face it, a lot of the people who talk about this stuff ain't exactly living in bad neighborhoods. I don't care about what you say. I care about what you do. And social media very much, especially among the highest echelon on social media, is all about what they say and not at all about what they do. And it's all about showing how much better they are as a person than everybody else. It's this dick-waving contest as to who's more virtuous rather than a contest as to who can do better in the world. And I'm sick and tired of that being shown to everyday people who are going to look in the mirror and think to themselves, gee, I'm never going to be as good as that person. Look at what I've done. Look at what I've accomplished. Look at the terrible thoughts that I have when I feel sad or depressed or angry when something bad happens to me. I wish I could be good like that celebrity. That does no good for anybody. And one of the most important things that I can do as I hit almost 800,000 subscribers, as my business is doubling and tripling, is make sure that every single one of you watching, whether you are way more successful than me or whether you're in your parents' basement, know that I'm not better than you in any way, shape, or form. I'm not more moral than you. I'm not more ethical than you. I'm not nicer than you. Had people in my life who were really helpful. They were mentors. They were friends. They were acquaintances. They were therapists that helped course correct me along the way so that when I had those terrible thoughts, when I would potentially do terrible things, when I would say terrible things, that I didn't act on it to a point where something awful would happen. That's what makes me different. It's not that I'm better. It's not that I am more virtuous, and I'm sick and tired of people who pretend that they're so much more virtuous and so much better than all of you, because I'm not. And I'm sure if I sat here longer, and I weren't tired and hungry and wanting to go home, that I could go on for about an hour over all the terrible things that I've said and done in my life, all the people that I've offended, all the people that I've hurt at one time. And granted, again, I'm sure that I've done a lot of good. 
but I've also done a lot of bad as well. And let's face it, you have too. I just want to let you know that you're not alone. And I do my best to keep people in my life that will help me course correct whenever I can. And when somebody who's close to me within that inner circle does or says something that I think is God awful, I try to course correct them rather than picking up a pitchfork or mobbing them on social media. And I think that we are going to have to think about how we deal with this more as a society as time goes on. What, what, when is somebody allowed redemption? When are you allowed to come back from saying something that the popular narrative says is not allowed? When are you allowed, if you actually did something that's genuinely wrong and not just against the popular narrative, to say, hey, I screwed up. I'm sorry. I repent. What is repentance? And do we even care about giving it anymore? There can be no redemption or no concept of forgiveness in a society where all people think that they are virtuous and perfect. We have to embrace the fact that we are not perfect if we're ever going to go back to having the idea that somebody who's done something wrong can repent for it. There's a part of our brain that I think becomes really, really excited when we showcase just how good we are when we're not actually, without actually having to do good. And there's a part of our brain that I also think gets really excited and gets a little kick of dopamine when we showcase that somebody else has done something that's not good. It makes us feel like we've done something good when we haven't. And at, eight, at close to 800,000 subscribers, I just want to remind you that I am no better than you. And I really wish that more people who had high-profile accounts, more celebrities, more people were willing to showcase the fact that they were imperfect. So that people who were, not, who were imperfect would look in the mirror and go, huh, I'm imperfect. I've thought things that are probably not correct. I've felt things that make me feel bad and maybe have made others feel bad at times. And I'm going to do better. But that doesn't mean that I'm subhuman. That doesn't mean that I'm uh, broken doesn't mean that I'm worse than everybody else in the world because most other people in the world have had those times in life where they felt bad the same way that you did. The only difference is that we now live in a society that shuns and shames anybody who shares the honesty of their human experience. And that makes me sad. So that's it for today. Uh, and as always, I hope you learned something.